I think one of the strengths of this film is the interviews that you have with Michael Jordan himself, and they're multiple and they're in depth. And I think that when he's talking about basketball, it's one thing we've kind of heard it before, but when he's talking about the, the issues that he discusses in five and six, and specifically sort of the gambling and the pressure from the media, he really opens up and speaks in a way that I've never heard him speak like before. What was it like doing those interviews and how did you garner the relationship with him to get him to open up that way? Well, we had, that was May of 19. Um, and I met him in September of 17. So I had known him. I mean, we don't, we don't communicate on a regular basis, but at least he had met me enough times that, that he, he knew uh, and he had seen rough cuts at that point too. So he saw where the series was going. Mm. Um, and he had already seen my outline. He already had met me and he knew what I was trying to say with the doc and what I wasn't trying to say with the doc. I, I believe for that interview, the first one was, was June of 18. And then the second one, I remember when he left that, that June 18 interview, I said, all right, we'll talk in, in like September or October. And it was like, okay, yeah. If you told me that we weren't going to get another interview until May of 2019, um, I would have dropped to my knees at that point because we had to edit this thing. We had 10 episodes <laughs> to edit and we needed material from him. And I only had material to edit about three or four episodes. So we, by, by the time mid 19 came around, we had black holes all throughout the episodes that we had pseudo finished say one through six, beginning with seven uh, at that point, because we didn't have material from Michael on uh, the first championship. And, and that occurs in episode four. We didn't have material from Michael on the shrug game. So many things that we had not talked to him about yet. So as of January 1st, 2020, we did not have any episodes completed, locked, wow. picture locked. Um, so this year has just been kind of a, a, a firestorm in that regard. But to answer your question, as far as, some of the more sensitive topics we, we discussed, he brought a lot of those things up himself organically through the conversation we had in that first interview in the blue shirt. Um, so Republicans buy sneakers too, that came up just as, as we were talking about uh, how he's been misportrayed in the media and how he's misperceived by some people. The, the second interview was very surgical. I went in there with things that I knew I had to get and he only had an hour and a half that day. I think it was May mm. 6th of 2019. Not much time. That's not a lot of time to get mm. the amount of stuff that we needed. So I was cutting him off during that interview saying, you told the story already. <laughs> I got to go. Like, like, I'm sorry, you're the goat, you're whatever, but I'm in charge here and I got to go. So shut up. We're talking about this. Um, and it also, I had sent him, uh, as I always did, the topics, not the questions themselves, but the topics just so he could kind of familiarize himself and remember the 93 finals, like how many, you know, I'm sure he knows how many games there were, um, but just little stats and things like that to jog his memory. And the first thing he said to me that day, um, other than the fact that he couldn't have a cigar on set because his mom got mad at him. And he said, uh, he said, I can't have a cigar today because, because my mom got mad at me because she saw me. Smoking a cigar. Like, Jason, I got, I got, a, I got a question. I got, I got an important question. So you get a chance to interview Michael Jordan. As a fan of this great series, I'm noticing his glass. Sometimes it's full, sometimes mm. it's halfway, sometimes it's low. Give me an off wax feeling of how his glass got filled up. And did you get a chance to enjoy some of his favorite beverage as well? Uh, you're not going to like either answer. The, the, the answer to the first one was I don't know, because that was our first interview with him. And, and quite frankly, I was, I was, uh, myself about interviewing <laughs> Michael Jordan for the first time <laughs> for a 10 hour documentary. And I could care less. He could have plutonium in that glass and it was fine with me. The other thing that's misleading is that, all right, you, you can look at the levels of that glass. Also look at the lighting in the background. So sometimes the glass is low and it's, and it's dark out. Sometimes it's, it's high with, with full ice cubes and it's, and it's broad daylight. We interviewed him around five or six at night. So it went from day to night. That first interview took three hours. He didn't get out of that chair until eight thirty nine o'clock. So he may be talking about how intense he is in practice at five forty five, And he may have another thought about that at eight fifteen. And we may edit those two thoughts together in the edit room. So when you see one shot, his glass is up here. It doesn't mean that, that while we went to a B-roll, he chugged the thing. It took a triple shot. It just means that it's, it's too sensitive <laughs> to match up against each other. So 
I didn't, I certainly did not ask to, to sample what was in his beverage that would be inappropriate <laughs> in any setting. Um, and frankly, I don't care what was, was in that glass because he gave us a great interview. So you have to ask him exactly what he was sipping on that night. He absolutely did. It's, it's so endearing to hear that his mother would be upset about the cigar. So he needed to not have yeah. one in the second interview. Now you told us the story of your first meeting with Michael and the drink that you ordered, but what was it like as that relationship developed? What was it like the second time you ever met Michael? So the second interview we did with him um, was was 11 months after the first interview. Mm. Um, so I certainly had time to get my questions and my topics together o- over the course of that full year. And we had things that we needed to get to because that's that that red shirt interview is the interview that you see in large part in these episodes five and six. And we were editing those at the time last summer. So we needed this material from him. Um, and I had sent him the topics that we were going to be discussing. And the first thing he said to me when he came in was, um, I know you sent the topics. I didn't look at them. You can ask me whatever you want. I'm going to give you an honest answer. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Which is way better than him saying, I looked them over and let's go over this. Don't ask me about this. Don't ask me about this. I mean, you, you, you saw the clip in, in 92 in the Dream Team when he says, all right, no Isaiah Thomas questions. Um, and now it's come full circle because here's a guy saying, I don't even know what you're going to ask me, but go ahead. I'm going to give you an honest answer. So I truly think that he was an open book and we could have asked him anything we wanted at that point. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus.